live from beautiful downtown Stockton, California. It is the IT All Staff webcast. And now put your hands together for the man who argues with his GPS, your CIO, George Akiyama. Well, right. Wow. I, I'm just going to stand here and listen to that because I never get that. No. Uh, and, you know, and the arguments with the GPS work out the same as, as home. You know, the GPS always wins, and at home, I never win. So it's the same thing. I'm, I'm used to it. But, uh, you know, thank you all for tuning in. I got to tell you, uh, these are some of the best parts of the job for me and the IT executives. You know, not only do we get a chance to come out and connect with the various districts, but we get a chance to connect with everybody at home. All right. So by all means, uh, hit that Ask George email box. We got Ron Clemens here dutifully manning the box and uh, kind of sorting through the questions and figuring out uh, which are the best ones we can answer. Uh, so don't send those questions, but what are the best ones we can answer here live? Regardless, if we answer it here live, you know, or we answer it for email, whoever sends a question will get a response. But I also want to thank everybody here in, in D10. You've been great hosts, you know, for our visit. Uh, Stockton is only about an hour away from Sacramento. So I made for a nice, uh, comfortable drive. You know, I also want to thank uh, District Director Dan McElhaney. So Dan, come on up. Thank Thanks for having Thanks, thank Dan, you. for having us uh, here in your district. Welcome. I, I really appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your name's got kind of a f uh, famous uh, ring to it. Your last name. Is there a sports analogy there? Well, there is. Uh, there was a great 49ers running back in the late 60s. Last name was McElhenney, spelled a little differently, but right. he was a hero in the Bay Area for many years. And so I understand you carried on that tradition. Were you a football hero in the, for many years? And well, in, in high school, a little bit in college. Right. I went to high school in Colorado and attended the Colorado School of Mines, which was NA, NAIA football. And, right. But uh, did a lot of hockey, did a lot of basketball, baseball. Wow. And I still and I can still follow those sports. That's oh. a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> but you do more than follow, right? Because I understand maybe you uh, you still maybe hit the ball a little bit or do some other things. Well, I believe that I could still play for the NBA <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> uh, I love it, man. Keep yeah. the dream alive. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the dream alive. Yeah, but sure, yeah. But do you get your sticks out? You know, do you go golfing? Oh yeah, I do a little golfing. Oh. Uh, anytime they need a really bad golfer on the on the scramble, <laughs> I'm there. I'm, a, I'm surprised we haven't been paired up before because normally, you know, that, that's where I get my calling too. Every couple of years, somebody's truly desperate and they need a live body and that's when I get called in. So. Well, uh, let's look forward to that. All right, all right, we're going to pair up. We're going to pair up. Fantastic. Uh, you know, there's so many things going on, you know, in your district. I was yes. wondering if you could uh, maybe elaborate or share some of the great things that's happening here. Oh, definitely. So. Uh, for those of you here, welcome. Welcome from Sacramento. Welcome here from District 10 and then around the state. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm very impressed with IT and how we're able to be so successful statewide, and I really appreciate all of you. District 10 covers eight counties from Stockton to Modesto to Merced. Uh, those three valley counties are self-help counties, uh, and they they're, they're keep us very busy. But we also have five mountain counties. Alpine, Amador, Calaveras, Tuolumne, and Mariposa, and they keep us very busy, particularly during, uh, we've had great snow season, great ski yeah. season. Fantastic. I used to ski, George. I don't, oh. I don't ski anymore. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I used to fall. I didn't call it yeah. skiing what I did. <laughs> a lot of getting up, a lot of getting <laughs> up. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so our snow plows have been operating almost oh. every weekend uh, since the December holidays, and we have a fantastic maintenance team of about 400 employees. Uh, and the snow crews were even out last night oh, on wow. Route 108 and, uh, and Route 88. And so we're, we're very busy. We have five chain control areas right now on, wow. on uh, five different routes. Amazing. Uh, so snow's, snow's great for California. It keeps us busy. And I really appreciate District 10 maintenance. Uh, and then overall, we, yeah. we've got SB1 projects that are fix it first across, these, across the eight counties. And we're very, very busy as part of the central region and District 6 leads our capital program um, and so together we're one region and, and we're looking forward to um, continuous working with all our partners in the area. Terrific project management, terrific capital program, maintenance and ops, can't say enough about District 10. All right, well I you know, really uh, appreciate all you've done for Caltrans, not only here in D10 recently but D4, 
right? You're anchoring D4 for many years. I don't normally think it was Stockton or D10 as the mountain, so thanks for thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I'd forgotten all the snow and, and everything that you've got to deal with over the winter. Yeah, and I've had a chance to get out to our transportation yeah. partners at the county level. Uh, April 2nd, I'm going to Alpine County's uh, Transportation c uh, Committee, which is in Markleyville. So they start at 9 o'clock in the morning, go till about noon. So for Caltrans, we want to get out and meet and greet our elected officials on our commissions, as well as uh, give them our you know, progress and hear from them their issues. In the Mountain counties, a lot of it's traffic and safety related. Uh, so we've got a list for every county that we're, we're tackling uh, in the near term to make a difference. Wonderful. It certainly sounds like you've done all your homework on, uh, on D10, but you know, would you mind taking a little quiz with us? I want to test your, your knowledge a little further. Sure. All right, all right. So here we go. Are we ready? C D Trio. Wow. Wow. Sounds like we got a hundred people here in D10 IT. I love it. All right. So uh, the first question is about one of the local universities. UOP University of the Pacific is in which Caltrans district? And UOP, known for great pharmacy school, great engineering school. So. Uh, certainly one of the great universities on the West Coast. Do you, do you know us at in D4? Well, now you were in D4, so you know we may be I, I was one. Uh, I was the chief deputy director <laughs> since uh, 2003 in District 4. Before that, I was a deputy district director in District 3. Okay. Well, George, I'm going to go with District 10. D10? UOP's uh, just down the road here uh -huh. in Stockton. All right, all right. So, so you've... All right, Dan, you, you crush it, sir. Not only are you, you learning the outline areas, but certainly you're learning kind of in, in Stockton itself. And you're right, it's only a few miles down the street. So, beautiful campus. All right, next question. Here we go. Uh, Yosemite National Park is in which Caltrans district? And Yosemite, obviously, one of the great national parks, you know, in certainly America, and I would say one of the great parks in the world. I think John Muir had a, a lot to do with it. I used to spend uh, some winters in Yosemite National Park, so it's great in the winter, great in the summer, great in the spring, all year round. Um, do you think that would be in D10? Again, we got the D4, D3, so you we're trying to jog your memory to see uh, of the places you've been, where could that be? George, that's definitely in District 10, because we have Route 120 and 140 that go to the gates of Yosemite. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> And you're two for two. I, we got to come up with some tougher questions for you, obviously, because okay. you're killing it. All right. So we'll see. The next one, I think, is a little tougher. Um, in this Caltrans district, you can taste wine in the Shenandoah Valley. I hear it has over 40 wineries in this valley. Not that I've been to every one. Let's not start that rumor. But uh, D1, you know, certainly North California. D3. Now, you haven't been in D1 yet, have you? I, as a North Region Manager, I had staff in Eureka. <laughs> All right, so I, I can't even stump you on that one. All right, so D1, D3, and D10. Mm -hmm. Who's got the, the wineries in the Shenandoah Valley? Well, District 1 might have some wineries. Okay. You don't see them too often. Maybe it's in the southern part of the district. Mm -hmm. District 3 has a few, few wineries, but District 10 absolutely has some fantastic wine. Wow. So the answer is... Okay. So certainly you're starting to see some of the diversity in, in D10. You know, you've got wineries, you've got great schools, you've got a wonderful national park. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the next one will surprise you, though. Let's try the next question here. Okay. Foreign Trade Zone 231, and that's not Trade Zone 230 or 232, it's 231, <laughs> is in which Caltrans district? Foreign Trade Zone, that almost seems like it'd be D11 or something, right, with the border. Mm -hmm. D3? D4 or D10? Well, uh, I'm not an expert at this, but uh, District 4 has a port, and we have the Port of Stockland, which keeps us very busy. I don't yeah. remember a port in the Marysville area, uh, <laughs> but maybe Sacramento. Maybe there's a Sacramento port. There's probably a Sacramento yeah, yeah, it's port. It's not port much to talk about. I've grown up in Sacramento. Uh, so are you a Kings fan? I am a Kings yeah. fan. You so know, it's been a really good season. It, it has been this season. Mm -hmm. You know, most seasons it's not as good. <laughs> so especially that fourth quarter it hasn't right. been generous to us. Well, they've been winning on the road. That's what I'm yeah, impressed yeah. with. Yeah, I'll take whatever I can get. The answer to this, George, is C, District 10. D10. Let's see. You're right. <laughs> and as you as you drive on I-5 uh, over the port of Stockton, we're replacing those two. Oh 
2,700 foot bridges. We have a project to replace those in about five years. Wow, it's, fantastic. It's in the, uh, in the design phase. Is that where four and five converge? Highway four and five? Or is where where the bridges the... are over the port, okay. yes. Yeah, Very just, good. just north of that. Fantastic. And, and who would have thought Stockton had a foreign trade zone? And you know, I'm thinking, Dan, you mm -hmm. only go to districts with large ports, right? So it's, got, it's D4, it's, it's D10. Long Beach, do they have a big port? Or? They do. They do. Oh, all, right, all right, there we go. Long Beach, yeah. there, I'm not foretelling Keeps future. it exciting, George. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. All right. And the last question, this is for all the marbles. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Here we go. This Caltrans district includes California's least populated county. You know, um, I, so as an advance notice, I would say yesterday this answer may have been D1, but mm -hmm. Frank Shelley, one of our team managers, uh, just had a baby boy, James, and so that's elevated D1. So they're, they're no longer in the, in the running. Uh, so congratulations, Frank, and I hope the family's uh, happy and healthy. So I'm going to take at least one of those off because of Frank's work. You are. So that leaves uh, D10 and D3. Wow, District 3 seems very populated, George. Uh, yes, in yes. District 10, we have a county, Mariposa County, mm -hmm. that doesn't have a traffic signal. And oh, I was wow. talking to Mike Healy, their uh -huh. transportation, he said, we do not want a traffic signal, Dan. There's no so we're leaning right. towards roundabouts at a few oh, locations. Oh, nice. I like those. Yeah. But I believe Alpine County has very few yeah. folks. I'm going to be up there you know, next week, but I'm going to go with District 10, George. All right, can you do a count when you go up to Alpine County? Let's see I'll who's try. I'll, I'll it. stop in the grocery you're, store. <laughs> you're absolutely right. It, it's Alpine County. <laughs> Alpine County has about 1,100 folks uh, for a population. As you can tell, certainly a lot of snow, a lot of road closures, I'm sure. They really appreciate all the great work you and your team are doing. We do a lot of snow removal in Alpine County, yes. All right. Great. Thank you. Well, Thank thanks, you very much. Sarah. I appreciate your time and I appreciate, you know, your acknowledgement. Thank you. Thank you, IT. Thank you. All, right. All right. So I'd like to uh, invite up another uh, local celebrity in D10, and uh, that's Sharon Ruiz. Come on, Sharon. George, it's Ruzan. Ruzan. Oh, I know Ruzan. Ruzan. Sorry. I don't know. I, you know, I used to work with a Karen Ruiz. I don't know yes, why you just kind of. she is. You, you're right. She's a cover California. Yes, she She's is. actually She's CIO. CIO. Maybe I'm foretelling. Maybe. Although, don't, let's not tell Mike because I know he loves to have you as the line. <laughs> so we don't want you to go anywhere. But yes. Well, thank you, Sharon. I, I well, appreciate it. Uh, thank you for you coming, coming down here. here. To District 10. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, this is not the first time you've been on camera, right? I hear you're a bit of an actress. Is that true? Or, you, or you're maybe making your career in, in, on stage? Well, um, All right. Is there, my hair okay? Is the right length, <laughs> the, right, the right size? Or you only do the, no, this profile? Uh, so uh, we're, my daughter and I have joined the, uh, uh, a musical next oh, week. It's, the show is next week. It's called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And Very in fact, good. Todd Larson is also in that, and he's the one who pushed me All right. to be in the play. And so I'm, I'm really happy he did, because it's, it's really been fun. Fantastic. It's the first time we've ever done anything the like that. The first time. <laughs> you guys get to do it together, right? Yes. And yes. So, so what role are you playing in So I play... Um, Miss TV, which is the mom of the kid that watches TV a lot. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, I, I could be the Mr. then because my kid <laughs> only watches TV. Um, and uh, your daughter, you said, is in as well? Yeah, and she's going to be an Oompa Loompa. That's classic. <laughs> I, I love that Oompa Loompa role. I can almost sing the song, but I don't want to. Uh, don't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chanel. Great advice for the folks at home. They're going to be sending you all kinds of emails. Thank you for that. Oh, and we've heard George sing because, you know, the first time we met George oh, was well, at the go. holiday party yeah. and he sat at our table and we were doing some song there. Yeah. But really, um, you know, the team was really impressed with how you, you know, you just stayed with our table Absolutely. and mingled with us. And I think that's the first time a CIO has ever oh. done that. And so thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you for that. Your team is so much fun. I, how can I not go to your team and hang out? And that's where I learned you're a wonderful singer. So you, there, you got the actress thing going, right? You've got the singing thing going. So I think you got the IT thing going. You're triple threat here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, similar, Dan, you know, I know you're very busy on mm -hmm. the IT front here in D10. Can, yeah. you, can you share with us some of the things that are going on? Yeah, so we've got several projects going on in District 10. Um, first is the VoiceOver IP project. 
um, we're scheduled to tentatively implement mm. on May 10. So hopefully yeah. that goes through smoothly because we've been working on it for Almost, months. Yeah. Um, and another proje project that we're working on is the computer room consolidation. Okay. So this is in conjunction with District uh, 1, 2, and 10, where we're going to consolidate all of our data to the District 3 TMC. Wow. And then with that, um, we're also going to expand our bandwidth. Okay to accommodate all of the, traf uh, the traffic that's going to be going through wow, that. Wow, how much more bandwidth are you going? So right now we have 100 meg, and we're going to okay. go to a 1 gig. 1 gig? Yeah. You know, I don't remember Mike telling me that there'd be a cost increase. I'm going to have to follow up <laughs> with Mike to see how that worked out. Well, I think certainly the, the, those uh, network routes are so important, mm -hmm. right, to make yes. sure that the services are delivered. Yes, in, in definitely. Well, fantastic. Are you also, you know, since we've got 10 up here, are you also working <laughs> on Windows 10? Yeah, yeah. So um, right now the district is at a 60% okay. uh, with Windows 10 machines, yeah. and I am working with the programs to um, make sure that they replace their Windows 7 machines by okay. the end of the year, and I'm pretty confident we'll meet that. All right, fantastic. Yeah. I've got no doubt. <laughs> Um, lastly, I want to bring you something I, I heard you're in a leadership program last year. Yes. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so I graduated in April last year from the IT Leadership Academy. Okay. Um, I was really excited when I got accepted because I know that many um, IT professionals apply and not everybody yep. gets in. So, um, you know, it, it was it's really just an invaluable experience because you meet lots of great people. Mm -hmm. IT professionals really and mm -hmm. you're you're there you're talking about leadership, you make great connections, great friends. In fact, um, you know they we, they'd send emails every now and then asking for, "Hey, do you guys have a policy for this? Can you share that?" And so that's a great way to network and to see how others other um, agencies and departments do things, right? right. And vice versa. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you guys still get together? Are you recent enough you still get together on a Yeah, so they do organize um, quarterly birthday celebrations. Oh, okay, so that's nice. that's an opportunity to see each other face to face. Yep, catch up and make sure everything's going smoothly. Yeah. I would say pick your partners very carefully because there's some of those guys you may end up seeing every day, right? So yeah. you just gotta mm -hmm. make sure <laughs> you know that we know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, make sure you buddy up with the right person, right? Because you could be in for a long haul. Yeah. You know, speaking of projects, I mm -hmm. understand uh, the district and IT folks worked on a nice project together that maybe we can share? Yeah, so to introduce our team, the team brainstormed on um, what kind of video we, wanna, uh, we wanted to share, and they came up with the idea of doing um, the intro to a TV series theme song. And this is what we came up with. All right. What, you look a little different now. I don't know. I don't know what it is, Sharon. Do you, do you, do you hair style yeah, a little different. Style. All right. The, the rest of the same. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, fantastic video. It looks like your folks had a great time, and I don't know if you noticed, but some of them were actually Falling wearing up. the same shirt. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, they didn't plan that. They didn't plan that, really. <laughs> no, they didn't. Of all the shirts, right? You think right. it's amazing. <laughs> so it just tells you the you know great minds think alike, and your team's doing. It. And for those who can't see the audience, they're wearing their mustaches now. And I, <laughs> I was trying to grow them, but I, I, I just couldn't get there. Well, thank you. Well, for we had a great time doing it. Well, so. it obviously shows, and it's it's not just this video, but mm -hmm. I know every time we we see the D10 team up in Sacramento for events. They always have so much energy and so much enthusiasm mm -hmm. and pride in their work. Yes. I appreciate everything you're right. doing with them. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, doing a lot, you know, uh, the next person I want to introduce uh, certainly does a lot for Caltrans and, and his organization is on the move. And uh, that is Carl Copper. So, um, Carl, also, you run the security team? Yep. Certainly at Caltrans, and, 
And speaking of dressing alike, I don't know how this <laughs> happened. But, uh, you know, we certainly uh, went, went through this, and you have so much going on, Carl. You know, is that something you can, uh, you can share with us? Absolutely. We can talk about the uh, cybersecurity updates. I think I'm jumping your agenda oh. a little bit. If you want to do oh. your updates. Oh, uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Carl. You're, you're right. I yeah. introduced you, thank a, you a for little putting, quickly. Thank you for so, putting security I was, first. I was so excited <laughs> about that. But as, as Carl so always catch me, why don't you stay up here while I go through my updates, uh, though? So Outstanding. All right. Very good. Um, so for the CIO updates, there's three things I want to talk about. Certainly the innovation program uh, we have, the MOU, that uh, we've developed with Traffic Ops and uh, the hardware software standards. So let me start with the innovation challenge, innovation campaign. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is really the new logo that we've developed for Caltrans. Now we had like 30, 40 submissions uh, statewide, so thanks to all of you that have submitted those, uh, those updates and those ideas. We ended up uh, with everybody voting and we got down to three or four items. And of those three or four items, the division chiefs ended up voting. And uh, this was the logo we came out with. If you actually go to the IT web page now, then uh, you're going to see the logo uh, out there. And you'll start to see some draft templates, some presentation slides, et cetera, that you can start to utilize. Um, you'll notice it's a C and a T. And uh, on the bottom are, are four tenants, one IT, collaboration, business focus, and achievement orientation. So that's kind of how we operate on a on a day to day business. Those are things uh, we strive for. I want to give a big shout out to Scott in D two. So he's the one who actually created the logo. And uh, Scott, I know we still have a lunch uh, we got to do with you. We're going to make it up there. Um, funny story. Last time we scheduled lunch on a Friday, uh, Reading District Office was closed due to snow. <laughs> so you know, barring Mother Nature interrupting us, we're going to get that uh, that luncheon on the calendar again and go for it. Some of the other innovation uh, campaigns we ran was one was around uh, onboarding, offboarding. And so how do new folks, right, coming into Caltrans, you know, how do they get up to speed, right? How do we inform them? How do we make sure they've got a great first, second, third week, great, you know, three months, great year, great six months? So uh, Dana Williams, uh, who works in our IT admin group, created an employee welcome kit. And uh, Murdad. Shara Madus, thanks, Saeed. I appreciate that. Uh, talked about a mentor buddy system. So as folks come in, we're going to assign them with a more seasoned uh, veteran in IT and you know, kind of shadow them, have a place where you can go ask questions unofficially. So you're going to start to see these two programs be implemented uh, across IT. Um, the last thing was about uh, internal communication. So how do we foster and enhance internal communication? Uh, Kimberly Riley came up with an idea for peer-to-peer -peer appreciation. So in essence, we're going to develop a system so folks can acknowledge each other. You know, so uh, we all do great jobs, you know, a, and the acknowledgement doesn't have to come um, certainly from your boss, right? It can come from your peer. So we're going to start to roll out a system so you can start to acknowledge uh, the colleagues that you work with. And uh, Sam Rosellis. Uh, developed a system to talk about admin, admin rights login for Caltrans employees. So these were kind of the first couple of campaigns that we ran and uh, we're going to see more campaigns. Right now there's an enterprise innovation campaign so you know we didn't want there to be confusion between the IT innovation campaign and the enterprise campaign. So we're going to take a little hiatus and uh, probably another few months maybe another quarter we'll come out with another internal IT innovation campaign. The second thing I want to talk about is the MOU with Traffic Ops. So MOU is a Memorandum of Understanding. It's kind of a little more formal way to, to document an understanding between two organizations. And what's critical about that is, is now we're still, we're still working through it, but we're starting to define our roles with the uh, TMCs. You know, who's going to maintain the equipment, right? who's got access and rights to the equipment. But it's a great first step in clarifying all those things uh, you know, that we partner up with with them. But it's actually putting pen to paper and making sure there's role clarity about what we do and what the traffic management centers will do. Lastly, it's time for the annual IT standards. And so what we do is we actually put the call out you know, to all the divisions. The first year, we ended up having about 140 contributors. And that's from IT. And that's actually uh, outside of IT. Many of those contributors were outside of IT. Uh, so we asked the program areas, you know, kind of, you know, what's on your plate, you know, what's coming up, and we asked them to weigh in on our IT standards. 
So Lotha Narayan uh, is organizing the IT standards, and you'll start to see some emails around that. And good opportunity for us to add new standards, uh, but also take away some old standards that you know are no longer applicable. So those are the the big three enterprise things I, I kind of want to chat about. Before I reintroduce Carl, and thank you so much, Carl, for the reminder that I didn't get a chance to speak because I don't want to lose that opportunity. And thanks again uh, for right. putting security first. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> thanks, Carl. So uh, thank you all very much for the opportunity to come and speak about cybersecurity and the work that we're doing in the security program and all the great work that everyone in IT is helping us uh, do to help actually move the needle and improve cybersecurity. So I'm going to talk about a couple of things. We'll go through this uh, pretty quick. Uh, but first off, thank you all again for the uh, help upgrading our endpoint detection and response system. Uh, we won't name names in this forum, but uh, and Michael talked a little bit more about that, but we have deployed it to about 22,000 endpoints now, essentially across every endpoint at Caltrans. And that uh, was in some measure, or in large measure, based on what happened at Colorado Department of Transportation and our lessons learned that uh, we got out of that. So it, it, it has really moved the needle in a significant way. We are starting a California Department of Cybersecurity audit uh, April 9th. There'll be boots on the ground collecting documents. We've pretty well collected all the documents we think in advance with your help. Thank you. We might be reaching out for more help if they, are, uh, if they, they need more documents. We'll let you know. And it might come as a, as a high priority request because the auditors are on site. We also have an independent security assessment vendor, so I think I can name names. Verizon got the contract to come in and do the penetration testing on the Caltrans network. We'll be letting the districts know that are involved with this. Uh, they come in and they, they try to uh, break into our network, break into our systems, and then they give us a report on areas where we need to remediate and close out uh, findings to, to improve security. We are working with the new bimodal program, and I don't want to steal Saeed's thunder on uh, local admin rights uh, process. And on, there's two sides to it. There's the process side, which is the form and the approval process. Then there's the technical side, which is a tool, and that's privileged access management, or PAM. What I'm talking about today, and what we're rolling out starting Monday, is in IT, a local admin rights process around approval or recertifying that you actually need local admin rights on your desktop. So from a security standpoint and a best practice standpoint, Caltrans wide, we have too many folks who have too much access and that exposes us to extra risk. So we are looking very much forward to the bimodal rollout with Saeed and he'll talk more about that too. And finally, uh, the last thing on, on my list is the application roadmap, or app roadmap for short, where we are working uh, on getting a contract out. Final bids are due tomorrow, where we will be looking at Caltrans from uh, enterprise perspective and all of Caltrans applications, primarily from an efficiency standpoint. So where are their overlaps? Where are their legacy systems? Where are their problems that we can address through improvements in modernization, maybe taking advantage of new technologies that are out there and reduce costs and improve efficiencies? And a vendor will help us do that. That's my list. Uh, Ron, do you have any questions for me from the Ask George uh, mailbox today? We do, Carl. This one's from uh, headquarters. Uh, Carl, we've been making a lot of progress in security improvements in the infrastructure. What area are you going to focus on next? Well, uh, thanks. That's a great question, a great setup uh, for talking about our future plans. As you know, I've been talking about we've been funded with some budget change proposal VCP funding to make these types of improvements and buy the types of tools that I'm talking about. And I've only just been scratching the surface because I could talk for hours about all the, the awesome things that we're buying. But when we talk about the future, the area that we need to uh, approach next is around, largely around the, what we call at Caltrans, the TOSNET security. So the field elements that are connected back to the TMCs connect through a network. And there's a variety of different ways they connect back and a, vi uh, a huge, of course, spectrum of IoT devices or Internet of Things uh, devices or industrial control systems that were originally built never to be connected to the network. And we're having to look at how we can secure, get our arms around that from a security standpoint. So we've partnered with Traffic Operations in addition to the MOU that George talked about. We've also partnered with them 
to also bring in a contractor and help us do a design study and work across all the districts to make sure that that design will meet the needs, enterprise-wide, so to speak, and then we'll work on making it a standard uh, across Caltrans. And traffic find, will find some efficiencies and gains out of this. That's, that's their uh, side of it, and we will find uh, improvements in our visibility and cybersecurity. So it's a really great partnership. Well, thank you, Carl. Thank you. If there are no any other questions, I'll hand it off to Lux Sue, Project and Business Management. <laughs> Thank you everyone, happy to be here to have the opportunity to give you guys some updates on some projects that we're working on. Today I'll focus on four projects. The first one is the TAMS project, Transportation Asset Management System. Who's heard of this project? It's a pretty exciting project. You know, the scope of this project is really on ensuring that we implement the Transportation Asset Management Plan to meet federal and state requirements, and also to implement tools to support the transporta trans transportation project prioritization. Now keep in mind, the focus is on asset performance management. We're not necessarily spinning up a new asset management system. This project is, gonna, is valued at $20 million, which exceeds our project delegation. I don't know if you guys are aware, uh, Caltrans IT project delegation is only $2 million. So anytime it exceeds our project delegation, it goes through Department of Technology's project approval life cycle, which consists of four different stages. For this project, we've already completed the stage one business analysis. We've also completed the stage two, which consists of the mid-level requirements, market research, and financial analysis worksheet. The team is currently working on what we call stage three, where they're taking the mid-level requirements, decomposing them further, and developing detailed solution requirements. Additionally, they're also working on several procurement initiatives. The team recently released an RFO, request for offer out, last week to procure a data quality vendor. They'll continue to develop additional statement of work to bring on board an organizational change manager and also an independent verification and validation vendor. Now, because this project is reportable, the IVMV contract must be managed by agency. We're looking probably by this, by the end of this fiscal year, we should be able to release a draft of the larger RFP to bring on board the uh, new systems integrator. TSNR, Transportation System Network Replacement. This is another large project that's also reportable. The focus on this project is to integrate geospatial information to meet the MAP uh, 21st Act requirements and also to address current system deficiencies. This system is unique because it contains all the um, highway data and that data is critical for us to generate reports to help the department meet our objectives of reducing traffic collisions. This project, again, is reportable, so it's currently going through the project approval life cycle as well. The team has already completed the stage one business analysis. Currently in stage two, they've already completed the meet level requirements, completed market research. Right now, they're trying to collect all the data to prepare the cost worksheet. And also, the cost data is critical because they're gearing up to submit a budget change proposal concept to request budget augmentation to support the implementation of this project. The third project is our CATS-2 project, Contract Administration Tracking System. This system is exclusively used by DPAC, our Division of Procurement, to manage and track all contracts. Now, this is a non-reportable project, but regardless whether it's reportable or non-reportable, the project management rigor is still applicable, but it's non-reportable because we believe that we can implement this project within our project delegation of $2 million. This is currently a mainframe application, so when DPAC reached out to IT, they were really excited. Hey, help us get off the mainframe, look for some solution for us. And so we're really excited about that opportunity. Anytime we can help out DPAC to streamline the procurement process, we benefit as well. So currently, we're going out, doing a market research, serving the vendor community to look at alternatives. Finally, Aptio. So last year, we assembled a team to really look at technology business management. Who's familiar with technology business management, TBM? Sharon, yay! So TBM is a, really a set of best practices that tell us how to run IT like a business. It provides us with the ability to have discussions on the value and cost of IT using data. 
right? How awesome would it be for us to start collecting all the costs tied to maintaining server, maintaining our application, looking across the board in terms of how we allocate costs across the 12 domain in cybersecurity. All that valuable information is helpful as we move forward with presenting data, establishing a uh, relationship with our business partner and show them the value of IT. So to support our effort to implement TBM in our organization, we selected a software to help us with that effort and that software is Aptio. So the team has been working with Aptio consultants to configure the solution to meet our business needs. Additionally, we're also looking at how we do timekeeping, what our coding structure looks like to make sure we have a consistent framework moving forward. So as we're wrapping up the timekeeping requirements, we're also developing training materials. Come May, we're going to start um, delivering training to all the managers in soup on the new timekeeping coding structure. And then come June, we're going to uh, train all staff on the new timekeeping um, structure. So stay tuned for additional information on these upcoming training opportunities. And also, if you guys want to know more about projects in our portfolio, we do publish a monthly portfolio report on OnRamp in the PBMD site, so check it out, guys. So that's the latest and greatest on these four projects. Do I have any questions, Ron? You do, Luck. This question comes from District 7. While non-formal recognition is used within IT, will formal recognition, such as superior accomplishment awards, be used? Absolutely, that's a good question. We're always looking for ways to value our employees. You guys do such an amazing work. It deserves to be recognized. So managers and soups out there, please pay attention and nominate and submit your employees. Work closely with your division chief. In fact, I believe one of the managers already drafted something getting ready to submit to their employees for consideration. So yes, absolutely. That's something that we're considering and we are encouraging you to do it. Thank you, Luck. All right, thank you. So without any further questions, I'm going to introduce Saeed Bakshi, Division Chief over Application Development. Good morning, everyone. My name is Saeed Bakshi, and I'm Application Development and Support Division Chief. Today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, two items. I'm sure you heard about ADA projects. Is there anybody have any heard about it? What's ADA? ADA, American Disability Act that a couple of years ago, legislature passed a bill that to make all public face uh, websites for public agency has to be compatible or remediated, so reachable and accessible by uh, ADA people. So it's IT took the initiative and we started to reach out to all program area, all districts and uh, so we, right now, today, I'm, so, uh, I'm happy to report it to you. The project is, came from a long way in a short time. And all of, because of you, all IT staff did a fantastic job. What we have done so far, we identify all the documents. We used to have today a 3 million documents sitting on our web base right now. So working with our program area and uh, the all people that own these documents going through the prioritizations, cleanup efforts, and eventually come up like about 700,000 pages document, all in PDF format or uh, Word documents. And uh, today, as we're speaking right now, it's this document is remediated by program area and also by IT, and the big chunk of it is going to the third party to remediate this document that is going to be available on July 1st in our new home. And the second item that we are right now working on that, all those applications, that is a public face applications that you know our partners are using it or the public is using it, we're trying to remediate those applications too. And um, those applications that IT supporting it, it's pretty much we are confident that it's going to be ready by July 1st. But the challenge is those homegrown applications by program area or by districts that IT doesn't know about it. Uh, we're trying to work with our program area and districts to identify those applications, see how IT can work with them. So prioritize those applications so we can remediate it and make it a ADA compliance and by July 1st we can have it available for public. That's the challenge that's ongoing right now. The other thing is uh, 
the new design, new home, is uh, the design is approved by the steering committee, and as we speak right now, is is in process of constructions. So it's very dynamic, very categorized, very easy to use by public, and uh, we are very uh, happy to see that very soon. And uh, the challenges we're going to have it is to make sure that all related document to those category in your home is going to be remediated so we can move these documents to the, our new home or new bus, we're going to have it. July 1st in the corner, still we have a lot of work to do. So, but again, thank you all IT staff, they're fantastic, so keep up the good work. Still, July 1st is coming up, and I'm sure we're confident that we're going to meet our deadline. This is again is a mandated, this process has to be available, this new home has to be available for the public. The second item I'm going to talk to you about is a bimodal. Bimodal or what we call is a rapid application development environment and it's something that we know our customers need some solution for a business right away. They can wait, go through this PAL process or through all those things. So, with that, uh, we developed, uh, we created a new unit, we called it bimodal. Bimodal came, we got it from gardeners. This is like, you know, we have a waterfall, a classic way of doing development application. The other one is how quickly we come up with a solution. So, uh, as we always told by George that we always been trying to zip our own champagne first. So, what we did is we took two applications from our IT. One of them is IT procurement automations. And also the second one as call touch on that is a local admin right application. This application was developed in an agile environment, all working closely with our analysts, with the program area and testers at the same time development. So it was very, very fun and it's a very good, good practice. We are hoping to keep continuing this. This application is ready to move on in production very soon depending on the planning and timing and also OCM, Organizational Change Management process. So, stick to end is coming out very soon. And Ron, do you have any question for me? I do, yeah, thank you for that great information, Saeed. Uh, we do have one question for you. Sure. Um, what is the IT plan for business intelligence at Caltrans? That's a great question. Uh, as we know, what the Caltrans mission and going forward, transformation to modernizations, right? And obviously business intelligence or BI is a big, big factor. There's a tons of the gigabytes of data is out there, right? We need to how to manage this data for decision making. That's what they call business intelligence. We lately learned that our program area really, really looking after this. Okay, so what we're trying to do is come up with a business intelligence unit. So kind of a bring more people. And uh, as you know, uh, we have a couple of technology BIs already in Caltrans, like a Tableau as a BI tool, and also Oracle BI, also another uh, BI tool. But uh, in order to uh, support our program area and get to this in this process, IT has to get this initiative going. And right now, we're trying to expand our team and get more knowledge and experience on, on the BI side. So very soon we're going to uh, engage in this uh, line of business, which is very important, the business intelligence. Thank you, Saeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I'm going to introduce Mike from IMD to talk about a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Saeed. Thank All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me here this morning. I just want to take a brief moment to uh, introduce myself to all the newcomers to Caltrans and to the Infrastructure Management Division. I am your Division Chief and I'm also the Technology Officer for the Department. I just want to take a brief moment to go over some of the accomplishments that we, we in IMD have accomplished since last quarter. Uh, to begin, uh, I want to talk about the mobile device management solution. You know, I love it. You know, we talked about uh, standardization, we talked about modernization and simplification. So we're, de we're delivering on promise here, right? Um, MDM uh, is about equipping, you know, the, um, the employees, the engineers, the construction supervisors 
uh, the maintenance workers out in the field so that they can basically get to their apps, their data, so they don't have to drive back to the office and, and do the good old uh, paper-based reporting you know, uh, way of doing business. Um, we used to have over 6,000 um, devices running on a legacy platform. It's called Faria. Right? We, we bought and subscribed to what is called AirWatch from VMware. And uh, Graph has done a great job in terms of standing that up, uh, going through a, a proof of concept, going through the pilot, and eventually you know, going to production. And we have successfully migrated over 6,000 of those devices from Afaria to AirWatch. And we could not have done it with your hard work out there, folks, in the districts and headquarters everywhere throughout the state. Great job. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, the second item that I want to touch on, um, which you know, Carl touched on earlier, is the, uh, the endpoint detection response system. Uh, again, we can't name security products you know, for security reasons, but you all know what it is, right? <laughs> again, uh, over 20,000 desktops have to be touched right um, through a, a a very clever way to pull the client down so that um, this new solution can better uh, protect our um, compute environment and we are safer today more secure today because of your great work and through the leadership of Cara and his staff in SSD so um, great job you guys you know we're here to basically work with uh, other divisions to help them out to enhance and improve our environment to en enhance and support the business programs. Thirdly, you know, we talk about bandwidth, right? Uh, people have been talking about, you know, bigger applications, bigger data, BI that say you just uh, touch on. We just can't do it with, you know, um, uh, the legacy network circuits, right? Because um, it's just not adequate. So John and his staff from networking, network engineering, and the districts that have been working uh, tirelessly to plan and implement uh, the new improved network infrastructure. Uh, with that, we, uh, we are upgrading um, the backbone circuits from 1 gig to 10 gigs. We're uh, upgrading the uh, district connections to the hub site from uh, various pipe sites uh, ranging from 100 to 250 megs to 1 gig. And we're also um, upgrading all of our host circuits right, from various sizes to one gig as well. So this will basically put us, the department, in a better position to meet today's demands as well as to, uh, for the future's demands um, that we need to uh, respond to um, in our mission. Uh, fourth, um, we've been using ZCM, right, a, um, a, a legacy Novell application to deploy and configure our 21 to 23,000 endpoint devices. Uh, we have been longing for a new and improved Microsoft-centric um, system, and that is called System Center Configuration Management. Um, uh, Dave Logan and his staff have been doing a tremendous job collaborating with the district manager, Soups, and their staff to deploy the clients, um, uh, kick the tires, test drive to make sure that, you know, uh, we are transforming our old application packaging method to the new way of doing it. In, uh, SCCM, and they're doing a great job. Um, last time I talked to Dave Logan, he said we're at 91 percent, and he is very confident by August of this year that we're going to basically retire ZCM and basically put uh, SCCM into full production, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. And again, we could not have done and reached this point without your help throughout the state, so thank you. Um, and then the, the last couple of things is I want to um, share with you that um, uh, in addition to our physical infrastructure that we use to test, to develop, uh, and to train people, we are basically moving forward with 21st century uh, technologies. Uh, what we refer to here is a virtual desktop infrastructure. Um, I want to thank District 4, the staff, as well as the program managers uh, who came up with the idea, you know, uh, and, and funding. Also, I want to thank George for allowing me to uh, uh, come and beg for some money, you know, and he uh, supported that concept and contributed some funds for us to basically invest in the VDI infrastructure so that we can do things uh, in a, a virtual, a more efficient way to help train our workforce uh, and allowing uh, our workforce to use the VDI um, to test uh, and implement new technologies in a more efficient manner. 
And lastly, um, hey folks, I got great news for you all. We're moving from, from, from heat uh, to snow. All right, heat is our ticketing system. It tracks all of our service requests in IT, our incidents. Right, it has been a, a very old legacy, you know, um, system, and we have been waiting for you know funding and support to get onto a mo more modernized, more robust system, and that's called ServiceNow. Um, uh, procurement is in progress. Um, I've been working with Luck and her staff, and thank you, Luck, for pushing you know the procurement. Uh, we've been told that um, uh, DPAC is processing our request and we can anticipate that uh, the award will be made in early June and we'll have the vendor on board by the end of June. And so with that being said, you know, there's more um, uh, work that's coming out our way for, very, you know, for good reasons. This will allow us, you know, to really put, you know, modernized tool in place with its robustness to basically do more advanced things to advance our business programs. So stay tuned. Thank you. Ron, do I have any questions? You do, Mike. You know, you manage one of the largest uh, divisions in IT for Caltransit, so you have a large number of questions as well. Uh, when will districts receive IT specialist two positions? Before I answer that question, hey, George, you know, equal pay, you know, equal work, you know, what, what am I, I going to get pay more, you, you know, more, more pay, more pay, pay more work, uh, more less, work, pay. less that's pay. The, that's All the deal right. I got for you. <laughs> all right. So anyway, excellent question. Um, as you all know, you know, Sharon earlier talked about um, computer room consolidation. We're moving applications, data, you know, compute and storage and backup and all of that to hub sites, right? We're doing that. Why? Because we can't continue to invest um, the way our infrastructure is. We need to basically consolidate and leverage the economy of scale so that we can do several things. Enhance redundancy. Enhance, you know, uh, susceptibility, uh, susceptibility to um, uh, security risk, right, and and threat, um, and single point of failure. We just can't go on and spending more money, you know, investing in um, redundancy like power, H HVAC, and and those systems that keep our computer systems up. So rather than doing that, right, to um, all 12 districts where we have selected for strategic hub sites, and we're basically moving the compute and storage to those hub sites to ensure that we got greater redu uh, redundancy and resiliency so that these things don't go down. By doing so, we're creating more complexity you know, in these hub sites, and with that, it is consistent you know, with state practice that we're going to be introducing a higher level of IT classification to support those more complex functions at the, those hub sites. So the answer, the short answer is yes, and that will be forthcoming within the next three to six months. Great. Thanks for that, Mike. Uh, the next question is, will IT Specialist 3's and IT Manager 2 positions be available in Caltrans IT? Uh, and that is a yes. We will be looking forward to introducing those levels um, at, in the IT environment uh, as well. Great. Next question is, what is the deadline for replacing Windows 7 computers? That is an excellent question, and also it reminds me that, you know, uh, we have a lot of staff that are busy out there deploying Windows 10, new hardware, refreshing, you know, existing legacy hardware, replacing Windows 7 with Windows 10. We're up to 60 percent, like Shan has mentioned, and the deadline for us to basically uh, meet is going to be January 2020. At 60 percent, I'm very confident that, you know, we're working with business programs to identify, prioritize, and fund, you know, the rest of the population in the ecosystem by that deadline. Great. Um, a few more questions for you, Mike. Uh, will we be given access to OneDrive with our O365 subscription? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, I was talking to Carl uh, recently. And we do have a task force that has been assembled to uh, explore and to really develop a strategy for moving forward in leveraging the OneDrive so that we can basically move home drives content into that environment in a secure manner. Uh, Russ and the team uh, with some district representatives, um, they have been working on this. And I'm waiting for their briefing either tomorrow or next week in terms of their recommendations. So OneDrive is coming our way. Great, great. That's good to hear. Uh, the next question is, will there be opportunities to work for HQ IT programs 
but be stationed in the districts? That is an excellent question. I believe this question has come up before. We heard you before, and we are implementing you know, such programs. So the short answer is, yes, we do have positions that are being advertised out of headquarters IT, and yes, we are entertaining the feasibility and the implementation of um, hiring state staff, IT staff, in the district to perform those functions that are being um, advertised out of headquarters. Great, that's good news, Mike. Last question, could you please talk about the options that may be on the horizon to allow program staff to collaboratively work on documents? All right, so I hear SharePoint, although you didn't you know, mention this. But yes, that has been a popular request. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, um, after hours last night, the division chiefs and myself, we had this specific conversation. Hey, SharePoint is part of the Office 365. We are entitled to use it. When are we going to basically use it? My biggest concern was we just can't basically, you know, set it up and forget it and not have the support infrastructure in place. Last night, we as a team came up with a wonderful support model for this. And I look to basically roll this out within the next three to six months. Um, and, and just so more to come. So SharePoint is coming our way as well. Thank you much, uh, th so much for that, Mike. Great answers. All right. Thank you. All right. You know, I don't know if there's any more questions left. Mike took like a dozen of them, right? I don't, I don't, is, could there be any questions left? Do we have? to be exact, George. Oh, oh, no way. Really? You're kidding yeah, me? We've right, got a right. couple for you. Oh, all right. If they're hard, I'm going to defer to the division chiefs. Great. Are you aware of any large hiring efforts being made in the department? Yeah, you know, I, certainly I think the department continues to, to make these hiring pushes to support uh, SB1. And uh, with that, you know, we're getting information from HR now on a monthly basis on that flow of hires. So that information gets turned over to the DCs, you know, really um, for Mike's usage primarily, because then he can see the flow of hires that are happening. He can share with the local districts on what that looks like so we can start to prepare the procurements and uh, get the staffing model set so we can get those folks onboarded as easily as possible. So yes, I think it's going to continue, quite honestly. There's plenty of work for us to do. Great opportunity for us to rebuild the highways and take care of all that deferred maintenance. Um, so sometimes it looks like a lot of work, but I gotta tell you, it's tremendous value, right? It's tremendous value for us personally. It's tremendous value, you know, for our citizens and, and commerce. You know, I always say community, uh, our transportation knits communities together, right? So, so for me, it's a great opportunity. It looks like a lot of work, but it's a great opportunity to make everything better. You know, George, our, our, we're always trying to strive to increase the mobility of our, our uh, staff out there in the workforce, as we mentioned earlier. Um, this question is, we are hearing lots of iPads are being ordered. Will the one-to-one -one policy ever be changed when it comes to ordering iPads? Uh, great question. I won't say excellent question, but a great question. Um, for, the, for the iPads, certainly, you know, I think as IT professionals, we all believe and we all support mobility. I think overall there's bound to be uh, more and more iPads. I can tell you there's an order that's being assembled now for a thousand iPads. We still had an existing order for something like you know 700 cell phones and 300 iPads. All those requests go to agency at CalSTA, uh, so they're being weighed by CalSTA to, to determine whether or not, right, uh, we can move forward with those orders. But whether it's this month or next month, you know, that's how the industry is moving. So uh, certainly we're preparing the ecosystem for it. Things like AirWatch, right, really help us position ourselves to be able to manage those devices uh, and, and control how they're used, right, and make sure they're used as effectively as possible. So good news, we got the foundation in place. Great, thank you, George. We've got one more question for you. What's your thought process on modernizing and migrating applications to public cloud like AWS, Azure, and manage with DevOps model? Uh, again, right, that's a, definitely a future state. You know, I, I don't think it's an option. I think the question is how we're going to get there and how we're going to manage our way there. There are already some big projects going on with connected corridors, uh, UC Path, where they're doing development actively in AWS. So they've been working with us to try to support those connected corridor programs. Uh, and being that it's, it's Berkeley and Davis and company, you know, that's their starting point is AWS. So it's going to come, I would say, for those of you in the app dev shops who are eager and interested, you know, keep that fire, right? Keep that energy, because uh, we definitely want to start heading in that direction. We just to make sure we do it, uh, you know, in a thoughtful manner. We need to make sure we do it in a secured manner, because security is first. 
Uh, so it'll take a whole team to make sure we move there in, a, in an appropriate way. All right. Great, I George. We just had, had one six. come in. No, Hong. that's it. We're done. No. What's, <laughs> what's the question? This one just came in uh, hot off the wire here. Uh, what's right. the status of uh, IT Soup 1 compaction issue? IT Soup 1 compaction issue. So that's primarily affecting IMD as an organization. And IMD does have, a, I don't want to say a, a reorg, but they've got a staffing model request that's in HR now. So that starts kind of with the ITM2s and rolls all the way through. I will say, though, you know, um, Mike's already been aggressive in making some of those changes now. So in some of those districts, you already see uh, some of those compaction issues being resolved, and we're going to continue to resolve as many of those as we can, right, given our own authority. But at a certain level, you know, at the ITM2s and so forth, we've got to go to Department of Finance for approval. There's also some internal approvals that we're working our way through. So bear with us. We'll get through it. Thank you, George. That's it for the Ask George questions for today. That's it. Is there any other, no other questions for the DCs? No? No, not, not in the inbox, no. All right. Are there any questions here from uh, the D10 staff? You got them right here. You might as well put them on the spot. Is there anything? No? Do we have any questions? All right. What do you guys think? All right, we can, we can pick you up off camera, too, if, uh, to pick up those questions. But certainly a great opportunity to engage. I want to thank everybody in the audience. I want to thank Dan, right, for, uh, for being the guest and being such a wonderful host. And, and Sharon, you and the team put together a great video. Your energy shows up uh, in every interaction I have with you. The, next, the last question, I think, is where is the next stop? So what, what do you guys think? Here we've got a mountain. We've got a town. I don't think it's small, but we've got a town. Any ideas on where that next stop could be? Mexico. Mexico. No, Mexico. <laughs> You know, it's hard for me to get out of state travel, out of country, it's a little further, but I like where you're thinking, Sharon. No, the next stop is Fresno, D6. So we're looking at Fresno. I think it, the, the date is going to be June 6th. Ed was going to try to get us there in August, but he took pity on us in, in the jackets. So we look forward uh, to you joining us again on June 6th for the next quarterly All Staff. Well, thank you all for joining us.